After spending the week with the Mustang GT, we really liked it, but there are some things that are wrong with it, starting with the transmission. The MT82 transmission that was also in the previous generation Mustang, which my good friend Eddie here had some serious problems yeah. with his Boss 302. Everybody had serious problems. <laughs> Namely, fifth gear disappearing on him. Everyone has had problems with this transmission. Watch out, grinds. It's clunky, yeah. it's nowhere near as smooth, you can't shift as fast, there are better transmissions out there. Ford, get rid of this transmission, so, please. They made some changes to it that made it a little bit better. It doesn't really lock out as much, doesn't grind as much, but still, low gear, trying to drive, it's very, very notchy, and you just can't really drive it smoothly nor quickly. So it's really frustrating that such a great car is still sort of held back by this not great transmission. It's still better than the automatic. It's better than, it's the, automatic, better than the automatic, but, oh man, yeah. with an amazing transmission, I feel like this car would go from great to just an incredible Shelby sports car. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Next thing up is the weight. This car got 200 pounds heavier than the previous Mustang. That's the wrong direction to go in terms of performance. Uh, it did get a little more refined, more leather, it's IRS, blah, 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 but 200 pounds is significant. Um, it's approximately 600 tacos, and uh, it just essentially made the car handle not as great. Yeah, I mean, 200 pounds is almost an extra Parker, it, so we know how bad that is. <laughs> <laughs> Parker eating but, 200 tacos. <laughs> but this is one of the only cars where the new generation is slower to 60 and in the quarter mile than the last generation. So yeah, if you have a I stock mean, seriously, Bible, and you find a previous Gen 5 and you light up the drag race, be careful, because he'll probably beat you. Yeah, yeah. that's... That's not, fun. that's not great. Next up, it's too quiet, exhaust-wise. 5.0, you got a giant 5-liter V8. They sound awesome. This generation, they went for the refinement thing, and it's just really, really, really quiet. In the car, it actually sounds decent. They have the sound pipe that pipes in some actual engine induction noise, blah, blah, blah. Outside, if a car drives by, it's a 5.0. You can't tell if it's a 5.0 or a V6 or an EcoBoost because they sound exactly the same. Yeah, that's like one of the best characteristics of the Mustang is the sound. Yes. Inside, yeah, you hear the engine, but it is, it's is—it's really smooth sounding. It doesn't have See, that. I'd say that's a good thing. Yeah? Yeah. I don't know. It doesn't have that. Uh, hello oh, hello, fellow Mustang <laughs> owner. Uh, well, we don't own this. You do. You, not this. I don't own this one. A I different own a one. Yeah. Wow. Oof, words today. But, <laughs> Continuing. <laughs> Yeah, I remember when the first ones rolled by, and you can't great. know that oh, this, current, this, gen, this generation, yeah. and you literally can't hear it. I mean, that distinct burbling of the exhaust that every previous Gen 5 O has, yeah. you totally missed that. Like the 4.6 was a not that great engine, only made like 300 horsepower, but it sounded yep. awesome. And I distinctly have a very vivid memory of standing on the corner of North Campus waiting for the bus to go back to Central and a new, brand new 5.0 came by, rolled around the corner, went up the hill, and I was just like, what? Oh, yeah, hello. Oh, so, <laughs> yeah, you need an aftermarket. Was that a V6 one. automatic <laughs> EcoBoost? <laughs> so, on the list of gauges that are the most superfluous and also confusing ever to be put in a car is this vacuum in inches of mercury. One, I guarantee that a good 75% of people who buy one of these don't know what IN-HG means. And maybe the 1% of people who actually understand what this gauge does... They'll also I, understand that what the heck is the point of it. It's the opposite of boost. Apparently, before all these fancy electronics and computers, a vacuum gauge was useful for diagnosing problems. But are you really going to self-diagnose these problems on the fly while you're driving no, you're not. The real reason it's there is on the EcoBoost Mustangs, there's a boost gauge there. The 5.0 is naturally aspirated, so they don't need a boost gauge. So that's why they put the opposite of a boost gauge in. Just People were saying on forums that it's also a placeholder for when you throw a supercharger on the car. Not a bad idea. Yeah. Charger, but turbos. I don't know. Seems like a waste. It's, it's, kinda, it's, it's, a, kinda it's a huge waste. Stupid. It it's moves stupid. around. It's almost a little bit distracting. Ooh. Ooh. The last one, this one might be a little controversial because they brought it back due to heritage. The 67 Mustang had the amber like turn signals in the hood. For the 16, they made this big deal. Hey, we're putting turn signals in the hood. Except, what the hell is the point of them? Because if you're behind the car in another car, you'll see the turn signals and, and, the, and the rear turn signals. If you're in front of the car, you see them there. This is for you in the car to see why. I, I mean, it's almost like trying to eliminate the forgetful people who leave their turn signals on on the freeway and you're like god damn it it's been two <laughs> miles turn your signal off maybe that'll help them a little bit but I, I it know. seems like wasted cost they could either a new hood the tooling cost the 
part cost. It just they could have either dropped the price of the Mustang by a little bit instead of doing that, or yeah. or added some other feature like another vacuum gauge instead of in vacuum inches gauge of, for of the mercury. Exhaust. It could be barometric pressure. PSI. Yeah, you know, anything. Yeah. Either way, seriously, it's it's, it's, it's pretty weird. It's lame. You don't need two remind. You don't need three reminders actually that your turn signals are happening. Light on you've the got dash. the light on the dash. You've got the actual noise, and now you've got a light on your hood. So. Yes. In case you're that forgetful. But overall, I mean, this is a pretty awesome car. Love this car. It's There's a just car. some things that we think if Ford could improve the Mustang, that's what they should do. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like always, please browse our channel and subscribe. Look forward to seeing you next video.